It is my pleasure to address you on the state of things with regards to our collective fight against COVID-19 pandemic. I want to thank you all for your relentless cooperation in our joint effort to get rid of the pandemic. You have been resilient, patriotic, and cooperative. I am very proud of our collective success so far. As I indicated in my previous addresses, we have continued to be responsive in our management of the pandemic in line with the progress made and the general outlook of incidents in our state and the country as a whole. As you are all aware that we work in collaboration with the federal government and other stakeholders in our fight to effectively combat this virus, AKT has continued to be a model in the country in terms of proactiveness, responsiveness and effectiveness. In many instances, our protocols have been wholly or partly adopted by other subnational authorities, just as we have also benefited from examples from other jurisdictions. This collaboration has been of tremendous importance to the overall success that have been achieved within the state and the country as a whole. Executive last month, I announced to you that our schools will be opened on August 10, 2020, to allow our final year senior secondary school students to join their counterparts in writing the ongoing West Africa Examination Council's Senior Secondary School Certificate Examination. I am pleased to inform you that since our children started their examination on August 17, there has been no spike traceable to them or their teachers. This shows that our preventive measures to safeguard them from being infected has been effective. Similarly, I'm also sure many of you have received the information that the federal government, working in conjunction with the states, has announced that schools could start from September as COVID-19 cases continue to steadily decline nationwide. Consequently, we are encouraged to further open our schools to other classes as from September 21, 2020. It is therefore my pleasure to announce that more classes will be reopened in the state as follows. Students in SSS 2, GSS 3, and Primary 6 are to resume on September 21st, 2020. Students in SSS 1, GSS 2, and Primary 5 and 4 are to resume from September 28, 2020. While students in GSS 1 and Primaries 1 to 3 are to resume on October 19, 2020. However, pupils in kindergarten and nursery schools are expected to resume on November 2nd, 2020, when we hope more assurances of safety for their age bracket would have been established. Tertiary institutions of learning in Ekiti may begin to reopen as from October 2nd, 2020, but this is subject to their level of readiness and compliance with the established protocols. They are to liaise with the Kitty COVID-19 Task Force for guidance on the appropriate measures to be put in place before reopening. 
Executive, you would recall that I directed that our religious worship centers could begin service as from August 9th, 2020. One of the conditions was that they could only hold one service. After a careful review and advice by the experts, I am glad to announce that worship centers can now hold two services on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday as the case may be, but midweek activities and night vigils remain suspended for now. Other protocols and regulations concerning worship center reopening still subsist. Similarly, government has reviewed rules regarding social events as it regards use of halls and event centers for meetings and occasions. Owners of event centers and halls may now be allowed to rent out their facilities but under no condition should such a facility contain more than 50% of its normal capacity. This is to allow for social distancing. Event centers are expected to observe all protocols prescribed for religious centers and to obtain certificate of readiness before opening. Meanwhile, government has observed with disappointment the consistent breach of social distancing regulations and the use of face masks in public places and social events. Whilst we have progressively responded to the initial lockdown with gradual relaxation in line with the progress made, we must remain vigilant as we cannot afford to indulge ourselves such that a spike may recur as a result of flagrant disobedience to established protocols. We cannot afford to go back into another round of lockdown with its attendant repercussions on our people. This point needs to be emphasized. Though there is a national decline in number of cases, there has been a noticeable upsurge in equity because we're testing more. One proof of this is the unpleasant but consistent figures that we have recorded in the last month. As at the time I addressed you on August 5, 2020, there were only 152 confirmed cases in Ekiti. Today, we have recorded a total of 299 cases, which means we recorded 147 new cases within a month. You would recall that the total recorded cases from March to August were 152. This suggests that from August to date, we have had nearly 100% new cases, even while national number has maintained a stable decline. It is in view of this that I have issued a new directive to the law enforcement agencies to ramp up their enforcement activities. We should not delude ourselves that we are out of the pandemic until there is a reliable vaccine in place. Even as we continue to evaluate situations and act promptly, I urge you to take personal measures and responsibility by adhering to all existing protocols, as not doing so could jeopardize our collective well-being. As you're probably aware, we're doing everything possible to continue to support our entrepreneurs, artisans, and self-employed residents. We assisted over 200 businesses to access the COVID-19 loan from the Central Bank of Nigeria through the Microfinance and Enterprise Development Agency here in Ekiti. We will also ensure that Ekiti residents benefit from the multiple initiatives from the federal government to support the economy, including the recently launched COVID-19 Survival Fund. As I end this address, I want to commend our great team for a great work they have done. I want to particularly commend our former Honorable Commissioner for Health and Human Services for leading the task force admirably during the period she was in charge. I express my sincere gratitude to our medical and health workers in the front line 
and our COVID-19 Response Resource Mobilization Team, and all donors to our COVID-19 Support Fund. Finally, I urge you to keep safe on all fronts, especially as the rains are here. We must not only keep safe in terms of COVID-19 prevention, we must also ensure that the drainages are kept free to forestall flooding, just as our drivers must keep safe to avoid accidents in this last quarter as we move towards the end of the year. May we all be alive to see the end of the year in peace and joy. Thank you for listening. Alalekiti, Agbeketerao. Oh, 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 oh,